Let us uh, call one another to worship. Let us stand. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The risen Christ abides with us. If we know him, we know him his Father also. Believing in him, we will be able to do the works he does. We believe in God. We also believe in the risen Christ. Let us rejoice, celebrating Jesus Christ is among us. Our hymn is number 312, verses 1 through 3, and I'll give you a heads up. We're going to sing 4 and 5 after the sermon. So you might want to leave your hymnals open. Let us confess our sin knowing that God is faithful as we confess our iniquities. Let us pray. You who raise the dead into life are our amazing God. Forgive us when we question your presence in our lives. Forgive us the times when we doubt that you will see us through our troubles. Remind us to pray, asking for our needs in the name of Jesus, so that we may be glorified by your Son. In the name of our living Savior. Amen. Let us uh, receive the assurance of pardon. My friends, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe the good news. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, for he came to save us. Amen. Good to see all of you. I want to know something. Do any of you have any spare rooms in your huh? Do any of you have spare rooms in your house? No. Oh. Yeah? Do you have some spare rooms? I have a basement, I guess. You have a basement? I live in my basement. You live in your basement, yeah? Um. Or in your grandma's house? Oh, oh, oh yeah, they have a guest house. bed. We have an upstairs room. Okay. Like, like we have a guest bed. Yeah, my grandma's room. My grandma and okay. have like a guest, a really nice guest room. Yeah, the guest room? Okay, you get to... And a kid's room, do you, yeah? I guess I'm doing, um, and beds. also the nursery. Pardon? I guess sometimes you sleep under our beds. You sleep under your beds? Yeah, so, kind, so, that you, that, that, so that you can also have a friend over? Does that happen? Uh, yeah, Hunter? We have, uh, we have an extra bed for my, next, for 
I sleep. An extra bed where you sl- next to where you sleep. Okay. So you have spare rooms. How many spare rooms do you think God has? A lot. Um, do you, do well, you th- that's the whole heaven, so that's probably like a mansion. Yeah, mansion. So, a uh, lot. You know what? I'm, uh, it, it, the old language that is in the Bible, in my father's house are many mansions. Choir, did you guys to sing that? I sang that when I was a kid, or our choir sang it when I was a kid. In my Father's house are many mansions. In my Father's house are many mansions. And it goes really high. And I remember when Mrs. Ivory would do that. Woo. No, I can't sing it that high. She was real sharp. <laughs> so, hey, there was a lot, there's a lot of rooms for God. There's a room for every single one of us. Every single one of us, everybody in the world, there's a room, a spare room for us. And you know what? There's a spare room for people who die, but there's also a spare room for people who are living. Anybody who wants to be close to God, you can feel God's presence and know that God's got a place in his heart for you. Okay. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for always having a place for us. And thank you for having a place for everyone so that everyone can be in relationship with you. Amen. You may return to your seats and go downstairs. Okay. And you've got your bulletins. And Angelina is going to read for us the psalm. Good morning. The psalm reading this morning is Psalm chapter 31, verses 1 through 5 and verse 24. It is on page 495 in your pew Bibles. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Amen. Good Friday, I preached that text. I, um, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then I used that whole psalm and talked about that. So thank you, Angelina. Very well read. God is our rock and our refuge, a very present help in trouble. Hear these words from the Gospel of John. I think you might uh, recognize them. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, many mansions, many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. 
Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do, not believe, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that, uh, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. May God add God's blessing to it. Um, I'm sitting here kind of thinking, am I going to share this with you? I am not preaching on this line that um, is often used to be very exclusive. It says, um, let me find it. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want to remind you that that text is said in, uh, particularly to a church um, the church where John is, the, or the writer is speaking to them. Um, it is written for a particular people, a people that did not think about others who were outside of their community, their group. And so sometimes we have people that say, if you're not Christian, you're, you're not going to be okay, you're not going to go to heaven. John has no intent for that to be the case, for us to hear that text that way. And so I, I cannot read that text without telling us and reminding us that this text is for that community. It wasn't thought about for the wider community. It doesn't have to do with the wider community. It has to do with that community. And my friends, the way I'm going to meet Jesus is through the Christian community. Others may meet Jesus in different ways. Now will you pray with me? Pray that the words that I speak are faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that that which you hear is that which the Spirit intends for your ears this day. Grace to and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I often read John 14 at funerals, and I'm sure you have heard it many times. I also recite it when someone is dying. Uh, it gives the person dying and their family some peace. And I'm going to continue to share this text at funerals and in rooms of ho with hospice and hospital beds. I believe that it, there is, my friends, some place where healing and hope, we will find healing and hope after death. I have no doubt about that. We usually call that place heaven. However, today, and while we, that text often leads us to thinking about heaven, today I would like to expand our understanding of this reading from John 14. Beyond place, we are called to be in relationship with Jesus Christ and through Jesus in relationship with God. The context, as I just mentioned, for the words of Jesus and for most of the Bible stories help us to understand in new ways the intent of what Jesus had or the writers suggested. I want to remind you that the Gospel of John was written about 90 a common era, A.D., um, so about 60 years after the death of Jesus. 
By this time, the believers in Jesus are becoming well known and are being persecuted by the Jewish leadership and the Romans. Their families are shunning them in ways very similar to the Amish who no longer live by the family rules or who have chosen to live outside of the community. Life is extremely difficult for those who have chosen to follow Jesus and live in community with this new set of believers. They had been attending the temple, but now they're excommunicated from their faith. The author of John, led by the Holy Spirit, remembered the teachings of Jesus. I want to say sometimes the words and thoughts of the Gospel of John are not easy to understand, and they often have more than one meaning. Somebody was saying to me in the Bible study, you know, I really like to read the Gospel of John. That should be the first one you read. And I'm going like, no, no, read Luke first. Read Luke first. Luke has got the familiar stories. You need to hear that first. John, you probably need somebody else to help you see how John's doing this and that and going back and forth. I did. So in the Gospel of John, Jesus often uses the word abide. Already in the first chapter, Jesus is asked, Rabbi, where are you abiding? We will soon learn soon enough, Jesus abides with his Father. Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in him. Throughout John, we hear Jesus and the Father are in relationship with each other and they are one. When we hear where Jesus lives, where he abides, when he goes to a, prepare a place for us, remember it is where he is in relationship with God and where he intends um, for his followers to be after his crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. When you're shunned, and you're without relationship, Um, it's really hard. Not many of us have been shunned in all areas of our lives. However, many of us know what it feels like to be very alone, and we know what it feels like to have the family separated. We know what that feels like, and, and we've got to remember that this is what was going on in the, the time of the Gospel of John. When I first let my family know that I would be getting a divorce, my father said to me, you're not going to be welcome in Holland anymore. Because I had aunts and uncles, and I was the first one in the family to get a divorce. I was told then um, later on, um, my uncle said to me, ministers are good people and divorced people are bad. How are you going to be a minister? I was in seminary. When my father became aware of what caused me to get my divorce, I was told if I ever reconciled with John, I would not be welcome in the home. I was in my first year of seminary. I went to my professor of pastoral care just sobbing. And he told me the story of the prodigal son. The father loves the son. My professor reminded me, even if my earthly father shunned me, I had a heavenly father who would always welcome me home. I think you know enough of my history to know that I have been in and out of Michigan for 40 years. I have been with my family, okay, even though I got the divorce. But there was never a time I was to reconcile with the ex. I tell you my story not to have you say, ah, oh, Jacoba, 
but because I'm learning many of you have also had broken families. You know what it's like to be very alone. COVID and the recent politics and the political issues have divided families. Some families can no longer come together. I'm very proud of this church for the ways you care for people who are shunned in other places, people with mental illness, people who have broken the law, people who are gay, lesbian, or transitioning. You care about those folk, and you care about each other. And so when I hear your stories, I know that you, even if your home family is not there for you, you have a church family who cares and welcomes you. John 14 is written for people who need to hear God and Jesus Christ is among them. They need to know that Jesus prepares a place for them. Maybe not heaven, at least not right away, but a place in God's heart, in Jesus' heart. They need to know that this people in, in the Gospel of John, they need to know who, that you know God who is in Jesus is the Father. And that the Father has set aside a place where, where we can dwell with him. We're always, always invited to be in relationship with God, who is our refuge and strength. Evangelina read, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Tom, courageous Thomas said, <laughs> I acknowledge, he did not know where Jesus was going. He did not know the way. The way is, his, is faithful unity with God. Jesus is the way because he's the one who is in faithful unity with God. According to my professor, Gail O'Day, truth and life, that's who Jesus is. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the one who shows us what truth is. He shows us a father who gives us living water, feeds the hungry with the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life, and whoever comes to him will never be hungry. Whoever believes in him will never be thirsty. He continues saying, anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. My friends, that is a word we need to hear. Um, I see somebody looking at the Bible. It's John 6 that I was just quoting. For the readers and hearers of the Gospel of John, it is relationship with Jesus who leads them into a new relationship with God. These folk in the time of John needed to, to hear again, to know as they were shunned, as they were persecuted, as they felt so very alone, that God and Jesus Christ was with them. How did they know God? When we're in relationship with Jesus, when we abide in him, we will see the Father. When we're connected with Jesus, we will see the amazing work that God in Jesus does. We will notice then the, the moments of new life and resurrection. Pay attention, my friends, to those times when your deep hunger is filled and your thirst is quenched. Notice when outsiders are welcomed in, when those who were blind now see. Our reading ends with a surprise. Anyone who believes in Jesus will do the works he does, and even greater works. 
We might say, yeah, right, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the blind to see, right. I'm going to raise Lazarus from the dead, right, sure. And yet, when Jesus again ascends to the Father, he promises to do whatever we ask in his name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's an important so that. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's the catch. Told to ask in Jesus' name, so that the Father may be glorified. I said a few moments ago that this church welcomes the vulnerable. I have no doubt that when the lesbians, gays, bisexual, transgender, and queer or questioning folk and their families see our flag, our banner, in the Memorial Day Parade in Livingston County, no less, they will be raised to new life, and God will be glorified. I have no doubt when people who are shunned because of mental illness know that they are welcome, they will find healing and God will be glorified. I have no doubt when those who are terminally ill are supported in Christ's name, they will find peace and God will be glorified. In order for us to be able to glorify God, Jesus knows praying in his name will be necessary. Resurrection faith calls us to abide in Jesus, to live in him, to dwell with him, to believe his way leads us to truth and life. Resurrection faith means that we're going to have to pray. And my friends, while that banner is going to cause a Some folk to maybe know that they are cared for by God. I hope that's true. There's other folk who are not going to like it. We'd best be praying now that we can manage that as well as the glorifying God. In his name, we will move forward. Amen. Our hymn, we continue singing. Number 312, verses 4 and 5, Christ is Alive. Let's take a moment for quiet prayer. Oh God, we are so grateful that you have a place for us in your heart. There's always room for us, that you will always receive us and never drive us away. Thank you. God, help us to glorify you, to make your name known in the world, and be with our other sisters and brothers in Christ who are also working hard to glorify you and sometimes finding themselves in places that are very uncomfortable as they do that. God, strengthen them and strengthen us 
to do the ministry you have called us to do. And gracious and ever-loving God, among the things that are so hard these days is the continuous shooting of innocent people. God, in your mercy, give us the courage to stand for what we believe and to find a way through. And Lord, our God, as we see shooting not only in this place but around the world and we see missiles and guns and drones killing people from a distance, glorify your name, God. Glorify your name and let their way of peace be found. You have called us to love and care for one another. Closer to home, dear God, we pray for those who are sick, for those who are grieving, for those who know what it is to be alone, separated from family. And grant to all your living presence in Jesus Christ. Abide with us, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We respond to God's goodness with the giving of our gifts. Let us pray. Let let us receive our gifts. (laughs) Gracious God, we dedicate all of our gifts. The gifts that were given this week at the ladies' luncheon, the gifts that were done this morning in the music, the gifts that have been given in our collection plates. Receive all that we have given in your name. Multiply it and help us to see how else we can serve you in the world. In Christ's name, amen. Amen.
there are in the um, bulletin little parentheses. And I share that with you. I did that years ago and um, decided to help the children understand what each of these parts mean and probably the adults too. Luke the evangelist wrote of our risen Savior who was at table with two of his disciples. And he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened. And they recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. In company with all believers in every time and beyond time, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the breaking of this life-giving bread. You may be, remain seated as we sing number 706, verses 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> Up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Holy God, our loving Creator, close to us as the breath we inhale and as distant as the farthest star, we thank you for your constant love for all you have made. We thank you for all the ways you care for life, for people, all people of faith in every generation who have given of themselves to your will. We thank you especially for Jesus Christ, whom you sent into the world as our Savior. We thank you for his birth, life, and de death and resurrection, and for giving life to the church so that your love may continue for all time and to be made known in the world. Gifted by the presence of the Holy Spirit, we offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices with the entire human family of your faithful people everywhere, saying, Holy, 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 Holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body. Take and eat. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us say what it is we believe. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and our drinking at this table that we might celebrate your presence in our lives. Make us one with everyone you invited to your banquet. Remind us of the day when in eternity we shall see you again and eat with you and all you have welcomed home. Gracious God, we offer ourselves to you, giving thanks for the opportunities to share your love in a world as we work toward justice and peace for all. Help us so that our words and actions will, not always, will always honor and glorify you. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ which we break that we might have life and have it abundantly. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed that we might know our salvation and God's peace. This, my friends, is the feast of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. I saw that Mary wants us to wear our gloves today, and I did not hesitate. There's, she's got, there's all kinds of stuff going around again, so. It is always right to give thanks. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the presence and hope Jesus brings to this table. Relying on the Holy Spirit, strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us into the world in courage and power to do your work. We pray these things through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who reigns with you, one God forevermore. Amen. Our hymn.
hymn is number 706, verses 4 and 5. It is God and Jesus Christ who makes us one, who shares with us the love of God that all might know and glorify God. Let us go forth into the world in peace and in joy. Let us go forth loving our God and one another. Amen. <laughs>